This is the uh, lecture for chapters three and four of utilitarianism. There's pretty much nothing that you need to know before you read it. Uh, so I figured I'd just um, point out one small thing uh, just so I could post a lecture and you wouldn't be confused and think that you're missing that lecture. Uh, so if you'll recall, uh, in the previous lecture, I think I talked about uh, positivism and Comte as part of the uh, historical context, and uh, he just shows up again in the reading. So. Uh, Mill is talking about kind of how uh, utilitarianism is supposed to work and how we're going to make it work and uh, what we do uh, sort of over time to implement utilitarianism. And one of the big points is that you sort of educate people into this sort of thing. And uh, this is going to cultivate the various sentiments that are relevant to making people utilitarian. And so he's talking about sort of this culture of the intellect um, and uh, sort of you start with artificial moral associations but then eventually you'll dissolve them and through analysis and uh, it comes up where uh, the feeling of duty when associated with utility seems as arbitrary as any of the others blah 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 and uh, what's the firm foundation for utilitarianism oh it's sort of this desire to be in unity with our fellow creatures and things like this uh, so this sort of feeling of unity with everybody and togetherness with everybody, including uh, animals, uh, is sort of going to hold us all together as we uh, get socialized into utilitarianism. And he says, as civilization goes on, this way of thinking about ourselves and about human life is increasingly felt to be natural. Every step in political improvement, improvement makes it more so by removing the sources of conflicts of interest and by removing the inequalities and in legal status between individuals and classes, blah, blah, blah. So the thought is, Look, you get more and more in, you get more and more equality as civilization sort of progresses. Uh, people start to see themselves as equal with others and equal with everybody. And the further you get along with this, the better uh, of a foundation you build for utilitarianism. Um, as the human mind improves, there's a steady increase in the influences that tend to generate in each individual a feeling of unity with all the rest, a feeling which in its perfect state would make him never think of or want any benefit for himself if it didn't involve also involve benefits for all the rest. So the thought is, as the mind basically improves, as civilization improves, as we make progress, we get closer and closer to this idea of unity and feeling uh, connected with everybody. And now suppose this were the case, this feeling of unity is taught as a religion, the whole force of education, of institutions, and of opinions is directed, as it used to be in the case of religion, to, make every, to making every person grow up from infancy, surrounded on all sides, both by people who have the feeling of unity, who say they have it, and who act on it. And the thought is, man, this would be like, imagine what society would be like if uh, it were like that. It would be much more conducive to uh, utilitarianism and just progress in general. And uh, he says, to any student of ethics who finds this realization difficult, I recommend that he get help from the second of uh, Monsieur Comte's two principal works, the Traite de Politique Positive. Uh, I don't agree with everything Comte says, but uh, this sort of uh, kind of secular religion, this uh, religion of unity with everybody is sort of what Comte is proposing there. So uh, that's... The, some of the stuff I was talking about in the previous lecture that uh, influenced Mill and the other utilitarians and other people too. Uh, it was part of the foundational uh, sources for a lot of the social sciences as they exist today, this thought that, uh, look, if we just make progress in these various sciences, we'll be able to come up with this sort of secular religion of unity of all humankind and of all uh, living creatures, uh, really, or all animals, as Mill thought of it. So um, that's kind of an interesting point and you can think about that as you read uh, this chapter or these two chapters.